The Imperial Military By decree of Magnus the Pious, every province and city-state in the Empire must maintain a state or provincial army at its own expense. Together, these regional forces make up the Imperial Army, the force that mans the Empire's fortresses, patrols the Empire's borders, repels the Empire's invaders, and in many places, acts as local law enforcement. These soldiers are armed with a variety of weapons, the most common being the halberd, the sword, and the spear. As well as having a standing army, the Empire has the ability to call up and use the warships of the Imperial Navy, which are divided amongst the First Fleet and Second Fleet, stationed within the provinces of Reichland and Nordland respectively. In addition, Imperial forces are often supplemented with militia troops that are little better than recruits and more professional mercenaries. Since its existence, the Empire has always been a nation born and bred for war, fighting off foes uncountable with the will, the steel, and the faith of their patriotic citizenry. With an unending chain of constant warfare, the armies of the Empire are brimmed with grizzled veterans of many campaigns, each one led by an even greater man of strength, valor, and heroic leadership. As their nation progressed throughout the centuries, innovations and inventions were re-engineered for the use of warfare, with the armies of the Empire now stockpiled with large quantities of devastating black powder weaponry and the technological marvels of the 25th century. With the need for professional soldiers always on the rise, each Imperial soldier is regularly trained, equipped, and maintained at the expense of the Imperial government. Enlistment in the state troops means enlistment in a full-time profession, where those with skill at arms enlist as basic frontline soldiers. Armies stationed within the richer South are equipped with the finest weaponry and armor available to them by their local government, with standard equipment being comparably superior to those in other national armies. Each regiment has a wide variety of weapons for certain types of engagements, with spears, halberds, and swords being the most common and the most flexible in battle situations. Imperial regiments used as long-range support are often equipped with handguns, crossbows, and longbows, among others. When not in war, Imperial soldiers are required to drill and train on a regular basis in order to build their stamina and deepen their martial abilities when the time for combat soon reappears. Supervised by drill sergeants, these men are harshly instructed in the importance of formation tactics and the need to fight as a cohesive unit capable of lending support to one another in the chaos of the battlefield. Those soldiers not stationed within a campaigning army usually serve as guards, acting as the local city watch, fire watch, and enforcers of the law, patrolling the streets or roads of the provinces for anything as small as minor criminal activities to as large as beastmen raids. State Trooper Regiments typically wear the color or colors associated with their provinces or city-states as a means of identification amongst the many imperial armies. 
although some exceptions are occasionally made. There are no overriding rules governing how, where, or in what proportions these colours are used. Instead, colours differ based on individual regiments' own traditions, their preferred uniforms, the whim of their commanders, the demands of the nobility, or even just the availability of materials and dyes. One regiment might be outfitted entirely in its provincial colours, while another could only bear sleeves or leggings of their province's associated colour hue. Many regiments, however, distinguish themselves by the use of minor details such as sleeves, cuffs, plumes, hats, or colours in a common uniform colour. Some regiments do follow strict uniform regulations, but most units leave individual soldiers to procure their own garbs, resulting in a variety of gear that are often in deferring states of wear. Regardless, troops on the march, based in the wilderness or campaigning, are generally more ragtag in appearance as their equipment wears out and replacements must be found. When on the battlefield, each Imperial Regiment would usually have supporting detachments of soldiers to help them fight in combat, such as auxiliary units of hand gunners, archers and crossbow men, as well as supporting artillery, companies and cavalry squadrons. Each unit has a role to play in the battlefield such as securing their flanks from enemy attacks, reinforcing the front line with fresh troops, or providing missile fire from supporting regiments of auxiliary units. Alongside these warriors are carders of mighty war wizards trained by the magisters of the eight colleges of magic. Such organization and cooperation has made Imperial armies particularly dreaded in the Old World. Were it not for the endless wars, famines and corruption that has plagued the Empire's long history, no other nation could ever hope to stop them should they be allowed to concentrate their entire military might into a single, earth-shattering campaign.